Well, great. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining into this webinar from the Citizen Science Association put on by one of our organizational members, SciStarter, and led by Leah Schell. Um, my name is Jennifer Shirk. I am the Interim Executive Director for the Citizen Science Association, and in addition to Leah, I'm also joined by Rihanna Putnam, who is our Community Engagement Specialist, and we're Excited to have so many folks signed up for this webinar as we launch a summer of webinars offered both by our organizational members and also by our working groups. And in a moment, I'm going to turn it over to Leah to dig into some of the SciStarter tools and platforms. But I wanted to briefly share a little bit about CSA. Um, we are an organization that's really focused on bringing people together to help point to and share leadership and expertise in citizen science so that the most people can have the, have the most rewarding experiences for both learning and for advancing science. And it's a collective effort and it's a big community, so we're glad to engage people through these webinars and through other activities. We're at a really exciting stage right now with the Citizen Science Association where we're about to launch a new three-year strategic plan with four pillars. Uh, one is to really bring attention to the integrity of citizen science and the excellence that it takes to do that well. And these webinars are one way that we're able to start to do that. These webinars also help us to create a space where we can connect people to share these ideas. And we recognize that these ideas that advance citizen science span geographic boundaries and disciplinary boundaries uh, and we are made up of a community of people with many different uh, levels and types of expertise to bring together to make citizen science really thrive. We also know that there are challenges that we all encounter in our work and we together from all of these different perspectives often face the same challenges and can learn from the challenges that we each have and how we tackle them. And the fourth pillar of our strategic plan is to really work towards building an, a, a vibrant community where we can all come together to share these ideas in an open and transparent way. So again, this webinar series is a step towards all of these things. And again, the webinars are offered by our organizational members and also by our working groups. And in addition to today's webinar, in addition to today's webinar, we have one of each of those coming up. The next webinar will be led by our ethics working group, and that is on June 20th. And then a webinar from the University of Minnesota's Extension Office looking at volunteerism and how to engage volunteers from a really wide range of perspectives. So looking forward to hearing from both of those groups. That second one will be on June 27th. So mark your calendars. And another place that you can find these webinars, if you happen to not be able to make any of them in person, I know you're hearing this, most of you live right now, if you're hearing it, um, but some of you may also be hearing it on YouTube after the fact. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel. That's where we will post these webinars after they're done. Sometimes it can take a few days to download it, edit them, but keep an eye on that channel for new and forthcoming webinars if you're not able to register and attend in person. But for those of you who are here live, let's make the most of this platform that we have through Zoom to stay engaged throughout the webinar when I turn it over to Leah in just a moment. Uh, we don't have live audio on just to keep things fluid so that Leah can present and share. But in talking with Leah before this webinar, uh, she's really open to active and real-time questions as we go along. And we're going to be using the chat feature for that. So please feel free to look for the chat or the dot, 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 more button. Sometimes the chat window is compressed under there. And then make sure that you're uh, chatting to all panelists and attendees, and that way we can all see it. You can also, if you need to, chat directly just to panelists if there's a technical issue or another direct question that you need to ask. And myself and Rihanna are going to be helping Leah moderate these questions as we go along. So with all that said, at this point, I am going to stop my screen share and I will turn it over to Leah. And thank you, Leah, for joining us and telling us about SciStarter Education. Really glad to have you with us. 
Well, thank you all for having me. I'm going to go through and make sure I can share the slides. Um, so yeah, let's see. So let me open the chat just so I can see everyone's comments as we go through this. So my background is in education and in citizen science and entomology. So some of the projects that I might present might have a little bit to do with some bugs. Uh, you'll see my little friends in there. Uh, so you've known our organization as SciStarter.com. Uh, we rolled our organization over to SciStarter.org this year. So any links uh, in the presentation that I have that are still .com aren't a typo, uh, we're still rolling over some of our resources. So just, just so we're prepared and know that that's happening. Um, so none of this would be possible without the many scientists, educators, and advisors on the project. In addition to these folks, we have districts who have supported the development and testing of this platform and citizen science practitioners working to develop materials for their projects. Not to mention the teachers embracing risk in their classroom and discovery by piloting our platform. And so thank you, thank you to them. If any of them are here today, thank you. Um, oops. <laughs> and I am very excited, let's see. And lastly, but not least, to Darlene Cavalier, who has been driving all of this forward. Um, so, the, one of the bigger things that I love to see when going into the classroom and interacting with our teachers is that we get these wonderful interactions, um, a lot of times on Twitter, of their students doing these, and mostly they love doing this real science, and so they love engaging and, and doing authentic things in their classroom. So when we see this done, it's clear, like this is what they want to do. So what is SciStarter? So with support of the National Science Foundation, NASA, and private foundation, SciStarter.org is the leading scientist citizen science hub on the internet. So we have over 3,000 projects, active projects in our database now, and they're all over the world. Uh, we're, it's being used as a research platform by Arizona State University, Cornell, and North Carolina State University uh, to accelerate the understanding of the field of public engagement in science, so public science and citizen science. In building on this grant-supported foundation, SciStarter is deploying a new ed tech product through school districts and universities. That's what I'm going to discuss today. So I know all of us mostly have a definition for citizen science, and I think every year at CSA, we, we always come back to discuss what that meaning is. For the purposes of our platform, I know all of you know what it is, but um, how many varied definitions that we can take on. But this is how we present it to our audience when we're using the education platform. So it's a way for everyday people to help scientists do research. When scientists need a lot of data, they ask for the public's help. People sign in to collect data by doing activities, like a lot of varied activities, cloud streams, changes in nature, counting stars. And they send their data to scientists. And then there's an opportunity for students to collaborate and analyze data on their own through, so, through a couple of our projects that we have in our portal. So Broward County Public Schools are the sixth largest school district in the country, and they have 45 middle schools alone in this, in this school district. So it's a, it's a sizable school district to partnership, have a partnership with. Um, Cheryl Arilla has done a lot of work and presented on, on this information um, before and so thinking about what sort of ways we can incorporate citizen science into the classroom using this this portal and as we present it to two districts it's part of their bigger picture of incorporating real-world science into their classroom so our projects range from space to computer game based projects to insects, my friends, and mammals, water, and natural changes in the environment. There are a lot of varied projects for students to participate in that align to their classroom materials and standards. So, excuse me. Broward County supports their teachers with professional development before they take ownership in their own classrooms. So once a teacher has gone through a project with their class, 
then they're able to have the opportunity to develop their own projects. And this helps with um, scientific literacy across um, the process of science, as well as the needs of the district and what they have desired to have as an engagement with our, with our portal. Then they have an opportunity to develop their own projects. And this is one that they created to, that was based on a community need to get adult cats adopted. So the community is identifying projects that they um, identify as important and they're able to, to work with that within our platform and engage with other citizen scientists in their community. So what is important to us and districts is authenticity. They want to do real science in the classroom. And part of that is to study the world and learn new things, how other citizen science projects will help real scientists answer important questions, and that anyone can participate in science and have fun. So our partnership with the Girl Scouts has been some very, has had very positive feedback um, with our troop leaders and our Girl Scouts. Uh, they're engaged in projects through a similar portal on the SciStarter Ed platform, and they complete projects and they do service for a badge. And so I love this, and they love how great it ties into the Girl Scout ethics of doing things for their community. That's very important um, in the Girl Scout mission. And girls love the idea that they can truly make a difference in this world through the field of science. They're putting it in their hands and they're, they're actively participating. Our curricular goals um, that we have are, inform all of our decisions on this project. I'm gonna walk us through what an organization like a school um, would see and expect to experience while they're on the platform. It's important for us to facilitate student participation in a real science project and not something that is one off or something that those data would not be incorporated into the research of a scientist. Students uh, want to find, we want to find projects that suit their needs, something that they're interested in, something that aligns with their curriculum. This allows for administrative support, teacher support. If it doesn't align with the standards, it's very, it's almost impossible to get it into your classroom um, just for time. And um, we want to help students see that science is an evolving and a participatory process. And that is, there are many facets of science and it's not just medical science. It's not just cleaning up your stream. There's a lot and a lot of, lot of different opportunities to engage um, and help your community. So uh, the user and student goes through a process. So we, excuse me, from the, uh, I'm going to go through this a little more detailed, but basically they, they first encounter so I start our education through Clever, which is a, this is talking about K-12. They're incorporating it, it through where they already are. So a place where they are already logged in and getting their assignments and their grades from their teacher. So there's not a next, a new, a different place that the students have to go to. So this is fully incorporated in the environment where they're used to getting assignments and um, grades and all those interactions that they have with their teachers. Um, it's very, very important to us since we're working with K-12 and even university that, and the public that everything is private and safe. We're not, we're not um, getting the personal information from, uh, from students. And so the teachers know who is participating, but SciStarter does not. And so that's important to us and to all of our stakeholders that are, you know, we keep that, that private and safe. Um, additionally, we have university partnerships, which, you, which is at NC State, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But that uses Shibboleth, which is the way that they log into all of their, their grades and their email, and so it's, it's that, that security platform. The point is that we don't have to have a million logins, and we don't have to redirect to a bunch of different sites. Since one of our main goals is to increase engagement and participation in citizen science projects, the way that we do that is to meet people where they are, and you'll see that theme throughout. So as, um, as we go through this, this roster integration system, which sometimes we call that a learning management system, just depends on your organization. It's basically the place where all those grades and you take role and you do all that stuff. Um, so this, this platform uses Clever, which is what a lot, of, a lot of schools and what Broward County School uses for their roster integration. 
So they would go through, um, if you are a, a teacher, you would add your students to your roster um, if they aren't already there. And then they would select which group of students would participate in the project. You might have your AP biology class participate in a project that you would have different than your um, like intro to physical science. They might be interested in um, participating in a different project. They have different standards that they need to meet. Then we would view the each project has a short video that the scientists created to describe their project. There's step-by-step -step instructions and materials, all the things that you need to know to be able to participate in that project. They select and assign one for the class or the group to do together. And then they prepare by doing hands-on activities to help students learn how to make observations and collect and analyze data. Collect and analyze data is a very important standard to meet. And so thinking about, about those themes as we go through which projects uh, are good fits for certain classrooms versus others. So students will find a link to the assigned project on their SciStarter, on SciStarter Education. So they go in to their, uh, where they would normally find their grades and assignments from their teacher. And it's right here. It's, it's as a project, just like any other assignment, it's like do page 31, numbers 15 through 40 or whatever. It would show up there as, as an assignment, just, just like any other. Um, they're able to go through it. Um, and then it also is able to show them what has been completed um, when they've done it. And so they have an idea of what they've completed, the accomplishments they've done, and the ways they've contributed to citizen science. Uh, so this is a way that they have access to their dashboard on SciStarter. Um, let's see, I just, here we go. And, uh, okay, next. So then we're able to make, share, and analyze observations online using online data forms that are created by scientists and Broward educators. So these are co-created so that it's what the scientist needs for their, for their data collection and the teachers know that this is, these are the types of information my students would know how to fill out correctly or they would recognize these terms and that way we know that what the students are doing and what the scientists need are, are working together. Um, then as a next step, teachers can create projects using the project builder and invite students, community members, friends, family, and fellow classrooms to participate in their citizen science project. I think this is really, really interesting because we can have science fair projects that are personal and we can incorporate, maybe the school has a project that they're interested in and the district, and it can be intergenerational. Maybe they go home and they work on this with their parents since parents also have access to Clever um, for their K-12 students. So then uh, you just, as an educator, you log attendance, it's right there in your grade book, and that way you can keep track of participation in the project. So it's simple, it's all in the same spot. The district would see something with these dashboards that you know, teachers might not be as interested in, but, it, but administrators want to be able to, to take, take a bigger step back picture of what everyone is doing. So the level, the level of analytics of the dashboards um, help us understand which schools and classrooms are most active and what types of projects they select and contribute to more. And this allows, allows um, districts and teachers to also decide like which types of projects would be most um, interested in to be participated in by students. So if they really like this project, maybe they'll do this project more than, than this project. So yeah, and as a quick reminder, if you have any questions as I'm going, go ahead and shoot them in there and I, I can see the chat. All right, so, so we have these, um, these kind of dashboards and these are data that our, our partners, our educational partners have requested. Um, partnering with the groups and districts, they're organized in different hierarchical groups. So we basically think of it as having four different levels. Um, and depending on where you are in, in your organization, you would have access to different um, data, data readouts and, and access to different parts of the portal. So for our university partners, there's the university as the top, then you have schools and colleges within that university, then you have individual classrooms, and then you have anonymized students. They're not anonymized to SciStarter, not anonymized to their professors or instructors or um, you know, club leaders, but they are, they're anonymous to us. 
So then with, with the Girl Scouts, you have the whole Girl Scouts organization. You have different councils within the, the organization, then troops, then anonymized girls to us again, not to the troop leaders. They know who, who is participating, but we do not. And then from our school district perspective, we have our school district, our schools, classrooms, and then anonymized students. So we can see where the barriers are in a project by, by looking, at this, looking at this bigger picture of the organizations that are participating and where the bottlenecks might occur for a project. So maybe they click on a page, they read something, and then they say, maybe this isn't quite for us, and then we go. Um, so then we can see projects that they gravitate towards, maybe they have different interests, and then these allow analytics allow us to get better at our jobs to recommend better projects for everyone. So the data to understand helps us understand the movement of people across the site and what does their behavior look like when it's facilitated or curated versus free choice on our on sizedorder.org. There you can search for a project and whatever you find might be what you choose to be interested in. And this is a much more curated experience for our students and our Girl Scouts and our undergraduates. And so, so what is the difference in behavior across citizen science in that way? This allows us to understand and have the facilitator track the progress and the organization is able to track collective impact. How much is my group contributing to citizen science? How many hours are they working on understanding their environment or protecting biodiversity in their daily life? And so we have a lot of different ways to think about this, but it's really uh, important and powerful with this platform that, the, that we're able to understand and measure this collective impact. So this link to the roster integration and learning management system meets them where they are, and the teacher and facilitator doesn't have to do more work to record those efforts. And so this allows all of those data to be collected. You see a question about the roster integration system. So, um, can you use the roster integration system with an existing citizen science project that has its own registration process, process in its own database? That is a really great question. Um, so we have what we call our API and our um, affiliate projects. And so that allows the, that tracking to happen. And so we found that the, the ability to, if we redirect, that's a bottleneck. We lose, lose participants that way. Um, but that, um, that, that way and that, reg that registration, if we can have the, <laughs> your tech folks talk to our tech folks and they can get, get things talking to each other, then we found that, that things can integrate better that way. I know that there's been, and this is always case by case, um, and so those, those types of projects would, would be a really good fit, especially if they already have a really robust, well-working data collection portal. Um, so I know that um, if you're really interested in that for your project, you feel like that sounds like it, that'd be really good to um, email, email us and we can start a conversation there. Because I think a, most, a lot of projects really fit in this model. I, hopefully you'll see that. Um, so here's an example of some of the Girl Scouts individual organizational goals. I hope that answered the question too. Um, so as we... They, they really want to learn to observe like a scientist, um, analyze data like a scientist, and take action. And so this really, you'll see these themes throughout, um, but these are um, the types of goals that, that our Girl Scouts have in mind when they complete their Think Like a Citizen Scientist journey. And this allows them to get an actual physical badge um, for their uniforms. So the collective impact of the, at the university level um, there are ways that administrators can keep track of the impact of their university's contributions. So we see the number of the number of data points collected, the number of service hours, and these types of data are what um, our organizations want to have and need for their their reporting. So let's see. So excuse me, participants learn how they can go from their organization's platform to ours if they choose um, to continue with citizen science once they have um, moved on from their original organization. So our, since our goal is to support universal learning and lifelong learning, we want everyone to 
be a citizen scientist for life, even if they've graduated from the Girl Scouts, they've graduated from middle school or university, and all their efforts become cumulative in the SciStarter dashboard, and they can continue to engage in citizen science even after they've, they've left. And so that's a way that all of their um, participation, while it's anonymous to us, it's still, still recorded, and if they choose to um, initiate a, a connection with the, within SciStarter, then they're able to keep track and um, not lose credit for what they've done in the past. So, um, right now we are about halfway through my slides, and so we're about 20 minutes, 25 minutes after, so we're good on schedule. But I just wanted to review for anyone, um, <laughs> awesome, um, review for anyone who is, you know, may have missed the first couple or if I uh, didn't cover all my bases here. So um, I wanted to go through an overview. Um, so our EdTech platform, it focuses on science participation and engagement as its key goal. And then any supplementary curriculum that educators co-create um, becomes part of that. Students participate in actual science projects that we curate based on district's specific STEM curriculum and what they need in their classroom. Students will work on an interactive web, web portal for completing projects, recording observations, and reflecting what, on what students have learned. And this is a, another key element is that students are able to create um, reflection pieces based on what, what types of things they have learned. Um, students will hear from real scientists at leading academic institutions. And so part of this is that our affiliate projects that are part of this portal um, commit to communicating with our, with our, our schools um, at least once a year. And I think that that's, that's another part. We want, want to always keep that communication loop uh, complete so that we're, it's a back and forth and your students are collaborators on these projects. Students can fulfill community service requirement credits via citizen science. As we're able to show the hours that students are participating, that's a way to record that for our students. And then teachers will receive training and professional development materials. So there's, there's um, kind of a, a train the trainer in there, and there's also a way to keep, to keep the teachers um, in the loop on what, what sorts of things they, they should expect from the platform and from citizen science in their classroom. So as we look, um, I'm gonna dive a little deeper now into each partner's platform and what those look like. So we have some screenshots so you can see what, if you're a student at Broward County, um, in a Broward County school, what you're seeing. Um, you can see the customization that we do for each school and you'll see that it has their different colors, blue or red, depending on your school mascots. And, um, the students or project and how that would fit into the platform and kind of where you kind of see yourself in there in some ways. So we talked about how Broward County provides professional development to their teachers. Um, they want to make sure that their teachers know what to expect. This isn't just showing up in their clever. They've, they've, they've been prepped for this. It doesn't just show up and it's not, it shouldn't be seen as something as an added extra, another thing to do. Um, but instead as something that um, allows, you know, allows them to find and replace some things that they're already doing in the classroom. So we talked, let's see, um, so this is all within Canvas. So this is some of the, P, the PD or professional development that teachers are receiving from administrators at um, Broward County. And the learning management system, and it provides all the resources. So you can see kind of what those would look like all the different topics and resources that are linked there. They define citizen science and provide resources for more research. Um, these resources are available at home for students as well. And we, and like I know as a parent, I have access to these. And so if, I want, if I'm interested in doing this more at home, we also might get an intergenerational piece in there, which is really fantastic. Um, thank you, Nancy, for that question. So Broward County is our official, their first big school district, but we're working, um, we're working to start in some other districts as the summer. So we're working on those partnerships now. So hopefully there will be uh, more for me to name at the end of the summer. So let's see. So is there another question here? 
Okay, so discussion on the on the terms and we can um, discuss citizen science versus community science versus public science. Um, I don't know if I'm the, the most qualified to have that discussion, but I, I do uh, always define citizen science with those terms in mind to make sure that um, we are we are inclusive and I really appreciate that link. Thank you. Thank you for that. So let's see. So as we go through, you can see how we have different projects that we could provide some information about that are within the platform. So this is Project Squirrel. Um, Broward has its teachers familiarize themselves through citizen science, through professional development, and they do this through Canvas. And then teachers are introduced to the SciStarter portal. So they see it in a place where they're really familiar with it, and then they can click through and then see, see it on our portal. So we take safety very, very seriously. So students, if they're under 13, um, we want to respect COPA, and teachers and facilitators can actually turn off the ability to enter data if, um, and, the teach, and then the teacher can physically do this themselves if they want to do that. So that's one of the security things that we talk about with safety is that oftentimes a student who's under 13 um, shouldn't have a login to a site and then enter data to that site without um, parental approval. And so this is something that the teacher would provide um, that security for, for their students. So this is what the district created. We collaborate with the district to understand how they would like to frame the projects within existing standards that they, that they follow and use in their state um, and district. They align the projects and work with students uh, and what they will do within the platform. It's never one size fits all. Um, then the standards may hit on not just science. So many different subject areas depending on the project and level of involvement. I've worked with history teachers who did citizen science in their classroom. And so it's, it's really dependent on um, what, is, what is wanted and desired by individual teachers as well. So um, for example, let's see, this is what Project Squirrel aligns to in Florida for Broward County Schools. Um, so we have, this is the data entry platform or form on SciStarter. It's probably really similar to, to a, any data entry form that you might have built on your site as well. Um, and these, these are customizable um, within, within our, our group. We found that having your data platform having the data entry within SciStarter allows that tracking to happen a little easier um, and it's a little more clear and there's less of those bottlenecks, less, less loss of participation. Um, let's see, so there's, um, we, wanna, we still wanna meet students and teachers where they are and we don't wanna have more logins and redirects if we can avoid it. Um, and if a student is granted access to enter data, this is what they would see, like if they're over 13. Um, and then if they're not, they would get a link to the PDF that they could print out and write in and have um, those data then given to the teacher and then they would have to enter it themselves, which is um, a choice that the teacher might make if they want to do some, if they're worried about data quality or something, something, whatever is going on in their personal classroom. So um, the things that students need um, are predominantly uh, let's see, right here <laughs> in the little red thing, you have like different resources that the students might want to have access to, different videos, different links. Um, maybe that project was, you know, there was a peer reviewed paper that was published that might be more an uh, interesting, interesting piece of information there. And so there's a lot of opportunity to highlight different parts of the project um, that students or teachers or administrators might be interested in. And then after signing up, students have access to their own SciStarter dashboards and it's already customized so they can see which projects they're supposed to be doing. They're not thrown into the 3000 projects, they have the project that they're supposed to do with their, with their class and then they can choose to keep doing more if they want. And then each, after students participate in a project, enter their data or fill out their forms, they are asked to uh, fill out student reflection questions and this allows for some like little qualitative feedback too on what's going on, 
um, and the teacher is able to, to see how their students enjoyed the project or what they took from it. And this is an, another way to engage with the, the writing standards as well in your classroom if you're, you're doing that with your science. I know that's always encouraged. Um, then the students get a generated certificate to denote their, their completion of the participation in the project. And um, that's just another way to, to show, hey, yeah, you did it, you're done, good job. Next, we're gonna take a look at how this kind of plays out on the NC State campus. So we see citizen science in many aspects of student life and not just in the science classroom. The platform has grown with the leadership of Karen Cooper and the public science cluster at NC State. And as a part of the well-rounded curricular activities at, at universities, the goal is to embed citizen science in campus life. We'll see some different ways that that's done. So they're able to um, experiment with more complicated projects at the university level. Um, the students and professors are, you know, the facilitators of these projects and the projects can take on so many different formats and this provides a lot of possibilities. So whether they're using their phone or they're setting up a very, um, a cool, you know, weather station or they're marking individual insects or doing something on their computer, it's a different way and uh, students can have different ways to engage with citizen science. So we're expanding SciStarter kits to more libraries and vending machines. And so this is a really, I love seeing the kits in that vending machine. Um, this meets students where they are on campus and kind of increases the real estate of citizen science. They're seeing it in multiple places. It's a concept that is uh, recognized in a lot of different opportunities on campus and the kids make it easier for students to participate in the citizen science. It's, they have all the parts they need. They don't have to go to CVS or they don't have to go to Target. They have to try to find a way to do that sort of stuff. Um, and then many classes that uh, first years take have incorporated citizen science. And this is possible in part because of the platform with SciStarter. Um, so a goal of the NC State is to create an entire citizen science campus with projects that are done campus-wide. And you might be familiar with like a campus common read. The idea is that this is kind of a campus common citizen science project. It's a science that all most students have participated in and have some sort of reference point to. When the students arrive at the SciStarter.org homepage, they see their logo. And so that's a way they can click on that and you see the Broward and the NC State and the Girl Scouts there also. They click on that and then they are asked to just log in with Shibboleth. If you're, if you're coming in from NC State, you know what this page looks like. This is where you log in. Sometimes it autofills and it makes life easy. And so it doesn't, it's not a lot of extra steps for students. Um, security and privacy, again, very important. Students are anonymized to us. We don't see their login. Um, this, is, this is part of, of NC State's infrastructure. When you enter your username and password, you get a special page that's, you know, that's NC State and that's the colors. And that way you can, you know, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where my, my assignments will be. Um, you can select your team, your class, your club. And then this step is facilitated by an instructor. They'll, um, they'll walk students through this um, if that's needed. Um, then you find your assigned project. This is a campus-wide project that is run out of my old friends at the Public Science Lab with Rob Dunn, and they're looking at insects and arthropods in home and in the built environment, so maybe dorm rooms. So that's a good opportunity to, to see those types of, of um, projects that are on campus and run by scientists on that campus. Then those that log in um, as faculty and administrators can set up their dashboards in different ways and pick the different projects that are featured. So there are a lot of different metrics and this allows us to tally the different contributions and keep track of service hours and collective impact. And so this way you can say, you know, <laughs> the wolf pack did this many hours of service and they logged this, these many different biodiversity points. Um, and so it's a great way to to kind of show all the work that the students have done and how they all participated in citizen science. So as we go through 
um, bringing this platform to two different districts and establishing more partnerships with with universities. We think about um, these are kind of the, the different things that we want to make sure we're uh, that we're hitting on and things that that we're keeping in mind. So what we would do is create a customized district level portal and that's like a one time setup fee and then every year would be a, a renewal and there's a per school subscription and then it integrates we make sure that it integrates with the the roster integration system or the LMS that, that is being used at the school so that we're we're meeting students where they are um, professional development on demand analytic analytics um, anything that that your administrators, your teachers, your students need to be able to show success and be successful within the platform is what we want to support with this. And if you're interested, um, feel free to email Darlene. And then if you're interested in seeing your citizen science project in schools, um, I, I, since I'm assuming this is, this is our audience with the Citizen Science Association, thinking about becoming an affiliate project and, and using the API. And that would, again, just be working with, with our, our backend developers to make sure that your project is integrated um, with, our, with our API. And then we wanna ensure that the project is, has longevity. It's going to go on for several years. So when we do this development, it's going to keep going. Um, we want the project leaders to do short videos and work closely with our team on uh, pages and so we make sure so the size starter page in the database has has pretty minimal like requirements for for entry into the database but for the education platform we want to have a welcome video and a little more information and some more resources and a thank you video and these sorts of just extra items and make sure that you're available for video conferencing with the session with the district and um, working with us to produce materials that that we need to support the platform things might you know get requested or, or changed and it's once we set up and do that front-end work then your project can get into more classrooms and more Girl Scout troops and um, more university clubs and uh, courses we also we touched on this a little before but make sure we have a clear data entry form um, if you don't have one it can be sorted supported on our site um, some of our projects have their like ant picnic has their project their data entry form right there on our site and some don't you do a redirect and you enter your data in another place and then also we want to ensure equity and access and so we want to make sure that there's low expenses schools don't have a lot of money to throw around for expendable and disposable materials for for projects we want to make sure that the the barriers are are reduced for participating and are low cost so um yeah so as we think about how how this might work for your project or work for your school or um, wherever else you fit in the spectrum of the citizen science and public science community science world um just any feedback <laughs> we're always um, this is a professional learning community as well. We're always growing and learning, so that's important to keep in mind. Um, so any, any sort of um, questions and uh, comments, I'm happy to, to take and discuss. So that is the end of my slides, but I um, am happy to, to chat um, with where we are here. Thanks, Leah. Thanks for sharing all of that with us. And uh, just a quick reminder, please go ahead and use that chat window to add your questions there. I did post a couple of questions here for any of you on the, on the webinar as well, just to get a conversation going. If you have a classroom or if you have a project, uh, we'd love to know about it, especially ways that SciStarter might be a useful tool for you. Leah, there's a question there from Candace uh, asking you to go back. It looks like you have a couple of slides. Candice, was there something in particular you wanted Leah to um, comment on? Leah, are you, um, one more, back one more. Yeah. 
All right. We sometimes ask folks if they're willing to share the slides themselves. I don't know if you can or not, but we will post a video. Um, would it be possible to also send the slides to those who have registered for the webinar? Yeah, so yeah, I have the slides and I'm happy to, to post those. We can have to help with that. Great, thank you. There's a question there from Nancy about privacy and how to build privacy. And Nancy, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into a question. I hope that's <laughs> all right. Um, but there, there are a lot of uncertainties sometimes when it comes to uncertainty, unto, <laughs> unto, a lot of uncertainties about privacy in the citizen mm -hmm. science world, and especially pairing that with building trust with classrooms or with communities. Can you comment a little bit more about privacy issues that might help um, dig in a little bit more for Nancy and, and the questions that, that are maybe unasked there in her comment? Yeah, so I, we, I'm, yeah, I'm a former educator and also a parent, and so I, I totally, um, so working within COPA and making sure that our 13 and under do not have any, their name is not out there. Um, the only, we don't see the names. We don't see who the students are. We just know that their data are going to the scientists as if they're, you know, participating. And so that, that um, this portal allows us to have that separation so that the teachers see what students are doing within within clutter we don't see that um, we just have you know we have our portal we have the places where where our students can enter their data and they have those those metrics district level um, but we're not seeing that like Jenny lives at this address and counted this many ants in her yard like we're not seeing those those data um, if that is clarifying um, Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, so in thinking case about anyone, in case anyone just has the audio, uh, Nancy just posted a question there or a follow up comment mm -hmm. about photos and the issues that photos can raise at, in terms of privacy and sharing photos. Yeah, so I know that you know you never want to photo you know share your photos of faces, and so any any projects that my understanding is that the projects are are just of. If there is a photo submission, which we don't always recommend for, for our project leaders, since if it's just depending on the project, if, if it's a photo based project, you need a photo. Um, but we, you know, don't include faces and those sorts of things um, in those in those projects. Um, but I think it's also you have a teacher as a facilitator. And so they know and are, you know, in control of their environment of what what students um, can and cannot submit and so that that toggle that allows students it's like right when the teacher's setting up there are their assignments for their students they can say i don't want my students to be able to enter data i will take care of that on my own and so students may um do that you know they'll, they'll interact with their teacher their teacher will then um enter those data and so that's a that's a another barrier between you know the world and our our youth, and so that way we know that that their their privacy is protected um, because they have their teacher facilitating that. So I'll just chime in very briefly and add that some of these questions are touching on ethical dimensions of citizen mm -hmm. science, and to to suggest that folks who want to follow this further, the ethics working group has been running a series of webinars, all of which are archived on our YouTube channel, and the last of which is coming up on the 20th, I think if I'm remembering that right, Rihanna, yeah, the 20th of June. Um, and they're really practical focus. The first one was an, uh, an overview of ethical considerations, including some philosophical backgrounds, but they're all focused on really practical issues when it comes to citizen science, and privacy is a biggie. So something worth tuning into and looking for more from uh, from the Citizen Science Association and that group over the next few years. That's great. But Leah, I think you were about to tackle that, that last question on there before I interrupted you. 
Oh, about students being excited about projects? Yeah. <laughs> um, example of a project that I've seen students, me personally, I've worked with a lot of um, projects about insects. And so the Ant Picnic Project, which is one of our affiliate projects and also has the data forum, um, I've seen it used, like I've done it with my, like I've seen it used in preschools. I walked outside in my office at NC State and university students were doing it. So it's a, one of those projects that it has a big range. And basically you put out different baits for your, um, for your ants and you're wondering what their diet preferences are in different places during different times in different times of the year. Um, and so that's, that's kind of a, a really cool project that has a lot of opportunity for um, data an analysis for students and also um, you're looking at ant behavior, which is really interesting. Um, and they kind of, you know, they interact with each other, different species at different baits. So, like they might really go to the salt or they might go to the protein. And so you have all these different opportunities uh, for, for teaching moments with your students and um, kind of quiet observation time. It takes less than an hour. And so these are types, types of things that the kids get excited. They start asking their own questions and designing their own experiments. So like, I know it's a win when students are like, I'm gonna bring in some Cheetos, you think they'll like those. And so that, that way that those students are able to participate and work on those, it's really, um, and they come back and they do different projects after they've, they've contributed to projects like that. That one's fun. Um, there's so many different fun projects um, and I've had the luck to be able to be with different scientists as they're developing these and working with kids. And so uh, I could talk for years about <laughs> that, but it's really fun. Um, anyways, uh, so can I explain the action for the students in the stream selfie project? Is that, I think I'm not understanding the question. So how do, how do they participate in the project? Is that the question? I'd say that's probably a reasonable interpretation of the question. Okay. Um, so, so I know that I've, I've participated in that project and you, it's to identify different streams, from my understanding, um, to identify different streams that are easily accessible by, um, by people who are willing to travel to that stream to, in the future, do um, analysis of the, like how clean that stream is and just accessibility to the stream. Um, I, I would have to like look closer at what the, what the, they're asking the students to do, but I know a lot of schools are in places where um, streams or drainage areas are nearby um, and so that would involve um, photographing the stream and showing like where it is and what um, location is easily accessible by students. Water quality and water safety and water testing and um, stream health and safety is a big topic touched on by a lot of standards in the um, in curriculum and so and that's across K-12 so thinking about, you know, that would be a really good jumping off point if you're thinking like, this is our personal stream that we have on campus. And then there's all these different water quality, the water cycle, all of these are covered year after year in science classes. So that's a really good, um, they're not learning all of the concepts about streams from this one project, but they're, they're making it personal and place conscious uh, by, by being a part of that um, project. I hope that answered that question. I'll just tag on there briefly a, a, an insight to both this question and the question before it that could help folks to know is that there are just thousands of different citizen science projects out there. So any one person um, won't necessarily know the exact details of what it takes to participate in a project that's listed on SciStarter. So <laughs> letting you off the hook a little bit there, Leah, yeah. but there are thousands <laughs> of projects and SciStarter is a great spot to go and get connected with uh, the most comprehensive list of projects out there uh, that I'm aware of. Thank you. And the, the projects that we have curated within the, the um, platform and are ones that the districts have identified as ones that they want. And then we go through and talk to um, project leaders to see, like, are you interested in being in this platform? And then we go back and forth to make sure it's all a good fit. And so it's coming a lot from, like, our students are really interested in squirrels. And so in talking and, and communicating to make sure that, that those, those projects are incorporated and so it's um yeah there are a lot of projects and they're all 
different and fun and they, they change and have different goals and ways to participate in places. And so it's, it's so fun to be in this space to be able to uh, access and be part of those and work with participants as well as our, our practitioners. So it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's great, thanks. And we may have time for one more question, but in lieu of that, I'll just chime in there that with thousands of projects, there are also thousands and tens of thousands of people out there who are running and managing and organizing these projects from all different roles, classroom educators, uh, librarians, data scientists, evaluators, designers. Um, and this is the audience that the Citizen Science Association aims to connect and serve to share practices and help do this work well. So if you're uh, not already connected through the Citizen Science Association, or if this is your first exposure to the Citizen Science Association, welcome. These are the kinds of ideas that we like to engage and share and help connect people around. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, you can visit citizenscience.org. Um, and you might even, <laughs> excuse me, consider becoming a member and all of that information is available on the site. But we're really glad to have um, the support of members of the Citizen Science Association, both individuals and organizations like SciStarter to help be bringing these ideas into conversation to help us all do citizen science to the best of our ability. So it, not seeing another question coming through here, Leah, do you want to leave us on a slide with your contact information so that folks can go out on that? If you have other things that you want to follow up with Leah about regarding SciStarter, uh, you can do so there. Mm -hmm. And um, I will say thank you here, Leah. Any last words before you leave, leave us yeah. off? Just, yeah, thank you all for being here and for all those uh, wonderful faces that I, I welcomed in my second slide for making this platform possible and all the teachers for welcoming risk and discovery into their classrooms and the practitioners for bringing citizen science um, out into the world. I'm looking forward to the next webinar. So thank you so much for hosting and Citizen Science Association for bringing all these amazing people together and making this possible. Thank you. Glad to have you all here. Thanks, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs>